Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this series of videos, we're going to talk about Dart language on the server. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure exactly how far this is going to get. I think it is important for everyone, no matter what you use um, Dart for, whether it is on the server, whether it's on the desktop, whether it's on uh, the web application, I think it's important at least to understand how to set up a server and connect to it itself. So you don't have to be in great detail, again, not that I think so, but it seems to me that that would be at least a good skill, a good piece of knowledge to know. But learning Dart on the server is completely alien. It seems like you have to start from the very beginning because there's so many new things to learn. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. Um, assume you have no knowledge. I'm going to assume that you've gone through previous videos on Dart or at least have a minimal understanding of it. If not, please refer to my other videos about learning to program in Dart. But in the meantime, let's talk about Dart on the server itself and just go through at least the basics. I don't know where this is going to end, but let's go from here, okay? So I'm going to assume that we don't know anything about the server. So what the heck is a server even? In simplest terms from what we've already learned, a server is just a series, a program that has a series of streams that you can connect to with your application. So it's not your application, or it could be your application, but you, you, it implies that you have another application that connects to this other server it itself, okay, through a series of streams. Uh, and that is the Dart terminology. Now, what is the server itself? It can be a program, an application. It can be a separate machine. It, it could be any of those. The, what connects to it is the client. The client is generally what you are actually using. You use the client, which is basically an application that connects to the server. And the purpose behind that is basically to improve functionality. For example, um, we're talking about a server, a type of server, but there are many types of servers. There are email servers, there's networking servers, there's web servers, and we're mostly going to talk, when we talk about server, we're going to talk about web servers, okay? Um, and what, what they do is in the name. So if you have an email server, obviously, what does that do? It serves emails, right? So I have a client, I connect it. So if I have a client, that's my computer, and uh, I need to send an email to some guy down the street, right? But my computer is not connected to that some guy down the street. So what I do do is I send my email to the email server. The other guy down the street probably is connected to the email server, same email server. If they're not, you're not sending messages to them, but you're probably, that's why, that's how email works, connected to the other client, he gets the message, he sends the message back through the server and to me. So notice that it improves functionality. My computer in and of itself does a lot, but this um, improves it even further. So it's a series of streams sent back and forth from client to server. Now, we're going to talk about web server. So what is a web server? It's basically an application or program that sends, that opens up streams that you can connect through with the browser. So traditionally, when we talked about client and server, we talked about different computers. The client is my computer, and I connect to a server somewhere itself, and that's perfectly fine. But now we're talking about client being the browser. So the browser is the application that connects to another program. Now that program, the web server, can be somewhere else. If you're using like a Gmail web application, right, you, could, you have Gmail, and your um, browser is on your desktop, it opens up and then it connects to the Google Gmail servers, right? So in this particular circumstance itself, your browser, your browser connects to the web server. It also connects to an email server at the same time, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the browser and we're going to connect it to a web server that is actually located on our own computer. So it doesn't go anywhere else. This communication protocol, how do you connect the client to the web server? Again, with respect to web, a web server, it's a protocol called hypertext transfer protocol. So do you remember hypertext markup language, right? It's just the hypertext is just the name that we gave to the web pages themselves. That's just, they had to pick some name, they just chose hypertext. 
The transfer protocol is just, what's a protocol? A protocol is just a means of doing something on a regular basis. All right, so this is the protocol on how you do something. So how do you actually do it? All it really is is just um, a pathway, a pattern that says, this is how you connect and this is all behind the scenes. This is very low-level programming. This is much beyond um, what we're doing. I'm just talking about just the basics of it. This is how you actually connect through the internet. So whenever you see HTTP or HTTPS, that just means the hypertext transfer protocol, how you connect to web servers. Let's go over a few other things that we're going to touch upon in just the next few videos. IPv4, IPv6. So IP, internet protocol. The internet protocol is how you connect it's uh, through networking. So how do you connect through the internet at version 4 and version 6? I have no idea what happened to version 5. But basically, it version 4 goes a number, dot, number, dot, number, dot, number. So sometimes it's, um, if you're on like a router, it's 192.168.1.1 or something like that. You don't have to know the details or something like that. It's just um, know that most people right now are using IPv4 almost exclusively. Eventually, we're going to be moving to this, but that's going to be sometime in the future. So it's just, again, the protocol, internet protocol, how you connect to the internet. And this is specifically how you connect to hypertext transfer web pages. So there is an internet. You don't actually have to go through web pages. So the web internet is not the same thing as w, the World Wide Web. But for our purposes, they're pretty much the same. That's pretty much what we're going to do. They're not the same, but, but they're pretty much. IPv4 is basically encompasses all connections through the internet. Um, if we're going to get our browser and we're going to not send it over the internet, okay? So we're not going to connect this to anything outside. We're going to connect it to an application locally on our own system. It's usually we're going to call it localhost or 1.27.0.0.1. Again, this style because it's IPv4 or this 0.0.0, .0 either one of those. So if you go on Chromium, it'll be something like localhost. That's what it'll be called instead of www. Notice there's no HTTP. You don't need it because it just basically loops back into your own system. So browser hooks up to a web server, which is an open stream, right? Browser through this location. Port. We went through ports in the past. We never really discussed them very much. Let's just say, for example, you want to have more than one stream. So you have more than one web server. So Port is simply a way of defining being able to access more than one stream. and more, um, But if you try to do too much in that one stream, you just couldn't do it. Um, there's separate connections themselves, separate different ways. So again, once we opened this localhost, there's a port that we have to go to. If we go through different ports, we could connect through different web servers. It's just a way to improve or expand our ability to connect to different places. Okay? Very much the basics. Therefore, we have a client, which is our browser. It runs an application. It runs a web application, right, in the browser. And it connects to a web server, whether it's on our desktop, which we, we will do, or somewhere across the internet, and we send information, data, back and forth um, through a stream that the web is opening. Okay, so web server opens a stream, and we connect to the streams from the um, web application and, and communicate back and forth. That back and forth, just one more thing, when a client sends information to the web server, it's called a request, okay? And when the web server sends information back, it's called a response. So we have to keep that in mind also. Request sent, response received. So I think everything is with respect to the browser and how it inter interacts with the web server. Okay? So let's move on from the basics and let's keep going. Thanks.